Welcome to this week on site. My name is Zenzel Ndebele and it is a special week uh, for those who are Christians and uh, of course for those who are not Christians because it's a holiday anyway. So we'll be celebrating uh, the Easter holidays uh, starting from the Good Friday up to Monday. You know, Christians, you know, celebrate the, the death or the crucifixion of Jesus and his resurrection. And of course, it means a lot uh, to, to, to those who are Christians. But to those who are not Christians, it means a holiday, two, two days of not going to work, two days of weekend, so four days of uh, a weekend. And uh, yeah, I know there's a lot that is going to be going on. So in the program today, uh, we'll be talking about food. Uh, I'm sure uh, Alice will be teaching us uh, a few skills or uh, cooking skills. Um, Alice, uh, which skill are you teaching us today? And uh, are you ready for Easter? I wish I had those skills to share, but yes, we will be talking about food. Culinarians, chefs, gastronomists, gourmets, epicureans, and culinary clowns gather here. In today's program, we are talking about the Ambassador's Cook-Off Challenge. Yes, don't miss the Breakfast Club tomorrow at uh, 9 a.m. Yes, it's a holiday, so you'll be at home. But uh, we'll be talking about, uh, you know, the Ambassador's Challenge, which I believe was a huge success. And uh, big congratulations to Tim Fulo and uh, King Jay for, for pulling that one. Uh, I saw a lot of people online really enjoyed it. There was a lot of talk. But you, you, you can tell that sometimes we don't need, uh, you know, politics to, to get talking. There are things that can unite us. There are things that can bring us together in our diversity that can make us talk. So we'll be talking uh, to King Jay tomorrow in the, in the Breakfast Club, telling us about how Tim Fuller started uh, the, the, the Ambassador's Challenge and many other uh, interesting things. We are also going to hear from the ambassadors who were uh, participating uh, in this challenge. So don't miss the show tomorrow uh, to get the full details uh, on this interesting event. A shout out to Tim Fulo and a shout out to Chef King Jay. Uh, it was so much fun for me. Uh, it was so amazing to see how we all got together virtually around the High Firizi. Uh, it was such an amazing experience. And I'd like to congratulate all the ambassadors and the diplomats who took part in this challenge. Hello everyone, my name is Adler Aristilt. I'm the ambassador of Canada to Zimbabwe. As we enter the final round of voting in the ambassador's cook of challenge, the short video here is to say a big thank you to everyone involved in this wonderful initiative over the past few days for the incredible spirit of community, togetherness, fun, that they showed as organizers, as sponsors, as participants in the High Fluidity Challenge. Uh Hi everybody, it's Manoli, the Australian Ambassador here. I wanted to say what a great experience it's been cooking uh, my very first High Fluidity and Sadza. Thanks Team Fulo for bringing us together for this challenge. What a great idea and what a wonderful way for us to um, uh, really uh, demonstrate a uh, motto of Team Fulo, which is graze, banter and friendship. It certainly was all of those things. And what a wonderful insight into true Zimbabwean culture. Vakadi Dinonzi Pete Vowles, British Ambassador to Zimbabwe. Vakuru Vakati, Hukama Igajwa Inozadziswa Nekujuga. The relationship isn't complete until you've eaten together. And never more has a statement been more true than this weekend, thanks to the work of Team Fulu for the High Firuzi Challenge. A weekend of laughter, of bonding together, of banter, of jokes, uh, and cooking High Firuzi. It's been a fantastic weekend, and I loved every minute of it. Good afternoon. This is Bernard Kassnagler. I'm the Turkish ambassador to Zimbabwe. I'm very happy to be part of High Firuzi Cook Off Challenge. When I first heard about it, I immediately want to be part of it. The reason is, this is an excellent way of cultural exchange. What could be better than practicing yourself cooking a Zimbabwean dish? Of course, cuisine is a gateway to culture. So I would like to thank King Jay and Team Filos Zim for the kind invitation. <laughs> Alright, so here we arrived, ready for the High Ferrets challenge. Uh, we have all the ingredients here. 
And I learned actually in high fields that it should be very simple. So no other things, tomato, onions, kuvo, meat, milli meal, and here we go and are ready. Last week, Team Fulo organized the Ambassador's Cook-Off Challenge, which took the internet by storm. In the program, we chat with Joe Hussein, popularly known as King Jay, the chairperson of Team Fulo. Our first question to him was, how did Team Fulo start? Team Fulo um, started off uh, quite like a joke, really, you know, because um, it wasn't it wasn't planned at all, you know. Um, uh, I used to post uh, occasionally, you know, when I'm having, you know, when I, you know, uh, my breakfast or something. I say, okay, let me take a photo. Uh, at that time, I think I had about three, three or four followers. <laughs> So, so I thought, look, I got no content, and um, you know nobody knows me. I, you know, so I'm new on these streets. Uh, you know, you got three, four followers, and you, you know, you're talking all by yourself to yourself. So I thought, oh, no, listen, I'll just put some photos of um, my breakfast and uh, try and show off that I've learned how to cook. Because when I came to England, of course, I couldn't cook. I couldn't boil an egg to save my life. Because as you know, in Zimbabwe, you know, you, there's a lot of help around in Zimbabwe. You know, I used to come home and find my dinner ready. I used to come home and find the house nicely cleaned and spotless. But not when you come to England, because, I mean, only millionaires can afford the help, you know. So I had to learn very quickly how to cook, but that's not the point. Oh, Tim Fuller, um, the suggestion came uh, from one of my followers, my few followers that I had at the time, uh, Ishmael uh, Rupanga. He's based in Australia, uh, but he goes up and down you know, to Zimbabwe and Australia, like most of the other guys. And he was suggesting that, listen, you, you seem to like food and stuff like that. You post your, and you seem to be getting a little bit of traction there. Why can't we just form a foodie uh, sort of handle? And I said, well, what? A foodie? For what? You know, he says, no, but there is a little bit of interest there. Don't you see the potential? I said, no, I don't see the potential. I'm bad like that, you know. Sometimes I don't see, you know, the potential. I'm, I'm very bad at that. But he, he, he did see it. And I said, okay, there's nothing to lose. Um, how much, how much, to, uh, there's nothing to lose at all. So we just, he, he, he registered Tim Fulu um, uh, out in Australia. He didn't register it, but he just created the handle. And uh, we took it from there. You recently hosted the Ambassador's Cook-Off Challenge. How easy was it to pull off? On, uh, on the just-ended Ambassador's Cook-Off uh, cook um, Challenge, you know, I woke up one day and I said, look, you know, I was thinking, I said, you know, if I were an ambassador, uh, let's say I was posted to, to, to Finland, um, I would like to, to immerse myself in their culture, to under, better understand and better serve, you know, uh, you know the, the country, uh, better serve by the country that accredits me, you know, so, uh, and also the, my country of origin. So I, I was wondering, okay, do they know our traditional foods? Do they, do they know how to cook it? Do they appreciate it? So I, I, it was just out of the blue. And I said, okay, I'm going to throw out a tweet and throw out a challenge out there, you know. And whatever happens, if I get one like and nobody responds, I don't care. Because sometimes you don't have to do things just because you think you're going to get 500 likes and, and, and nothing materializes. After those 500 likes, uh, then what, you know. <laughs> so some of us, we, we're no longer into that... Um, and do my likes kind of uh, scenario. It's good to have those likes. It's good to have interaction, but sometimes uh, it depends on the post. Uh, so I threw out a challenge, and I said to the diplomatic call, do you guys know how to brew a nice aphids? Which is a, one of the most popular dishes. I mean, everybody knows how to make a aphids, even I do, you know? So I was saying to myself, right, I'll throw this challenge out on Twitter, um, and luckily, you know, I couldn't believe it. The first ambassador to 
actually respond and accept this challenge was nobody, none other than the charismatic British ambassador to Zimbabwe. So, who are the inaugural winners of the Team Follow Challenge? Yes, this year is, uh, you know, the, ino the, the inaugural champion of uh, the Ambassador's Cook-Off Challenge is Mrs. Christine Mendes from the World Food Program Zimbabwe. She came first. Uh, second place went to Canada, Canada's Ambassador to Zimbabwe, uh, Ambassador Adler Aristilde. He came second. Third place went to Amai Manyama, as she's popularly known now. Everybody, she, uh, she, 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 she really resonated with people. Amai, uh, Amai Manyama is the Australian ambassador to Zimbabwe. Uh, ambassador Minoli Pereira, uh, she came third. In fourth place, uh, you know, in fourth place was Ambassador Murad Basiri. He came fourth. He was in the finals. He came fourth. Yes, he did. But all the ambassadors that participated, eight of them, all of them, you know, they are all winners. We had a fantastic time and we had a great time. Thank you, King Jay. It was nice talking to you this week on site. You can get more of this interview and full videos by the ambassadors on the Breakfast Club show. Yes, don't miss the Breakfast Club tomorrow at uh, 9 a.m. Yes, it's a holiday, so you'll be at home. But uh, we'll be talking about, uh, you know, the Ambassador's Challenge, which I believe was a huge success. And uh, big congratulations to Tim Fulo and uh, King Jay for, for pulling that one. Uh, I saw a lot of people online really enjoyed it. There was a lot of talk. But you, you, you can tell that sometimes we don't need, uh, you know, politics to, to get talking. There are things that can unite us. There are things that can bring us together in our diversity that can make us talk. So we'll be talking uh, to King Jay tomorrow in the, in the Breakfast Club, telling us about how Tim Fuller started uh, the, the, the Ambassador's Challenge and many other uh, interesting things. We are also going to hear from the ambassadors who were uh, participating uh, in this challenge. So don't miss the show tomorrow uh, to get the full details uh, on this interesting event. Uh, Alice, you know in Zimbabwe it's one place where there is no day without any political drama. And of course on this show we always talk about politics. So in our political segment today we are talking about uh, the Berkeley of Pupu. Um, we are talking about it metaphorically and, uh, you know, literally. Well, the background is that when King Lubimura settled here, he made a treaty or arrangement with the chief chief, my great grandfather, that there shall, be, there shall, be, there shall not be any war between the uh, Chinese people, people and King Izilikazi. Uh, now, in doing that, then Izilikazi asked a young child from Chief Chi who was brought here in the house of King Izilikazi as a little boy. That was my grandfather, Uben. The King Izilikazi then changed the name of my great grandfather, Mapanzure, to Mubeno. Uh, I think it's in the village. So he they grew up in here. Uh, after uh, King, uh, King um, Zilgaz died, then King, uh, uh, after King Zilgaz died, King Rubemura also adopted my great grandfather as Mubeno, not as Mubeno. Then he grew up here. He lost his Shona language. Uh, Pupu is a place that is located about 50 kilometers east of uh, Lupane Center. This is a site uh, many people know as the uh, Battle of Pupu or the Battle of Pupu site where uh, King Lobengula's Imbizo regiment uh, fought and defeated the uh, Impi or Niti Amapunu led by Alan Wilson uh, when they were pursuing uh, King Lobengula. So this is one of the 
most interesting uh, pieces of history uh, in, in e history of Zimbabwe, e history of Mandevele. But one thing that I didn't know, uh, which I, I recently discovered, was that uh, this is the place where uh, Umakwekwe Fuyane is sacrificed uh, by the king. So he is killed and buried with a guy called Mthanga so that they distract Amakiwa who were pursuing uh, Ulobengula. So by Fuyane being killed and, and, and buried at that place, uh, the, the, the grave was supposed to resemble that of Ulobengula. So Amakiwa is a buyakonabana engana paiza eting sise. By the time they realize that is not Lopengula or so forth, Lopengula will have long gone. And I've seen uh, a lot of uh, a number of historical books uh, by the Rhodesians that actually talk about the grave, it is a binga. Uh, where people say it's Lobengula's grave. But actually that is Magwekwe Fuyane's grave. And uh, there's a historian who says when they got there, uh, Lobengula said to Magwekwe, Angiti zavu melana, oguti minalawe, siza gufasongi. Wena uzakulua upegele, mina mpegele, lapa wena Magwekwe ngosu sifa. Something along those lines. So that was quite an interesting thing. And, uh, Great history that uh, our kids and our people don't know. But here is the story now. So in the last few weeks, there was the memorial or the, 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 the ceremony where they were uh, unveiling the new shrine uh, of this uh, uh, you know, shrine, or you know, not shrine, but a memorial site. But it turns out it's now more like a shrine. So at this event, uh, like you have heard in the video, the president said, uh, President Nangogo said, his family had links uh, because uh, Ukuluake uh, was part of the royal uh, circle and he was part of Imbizo. I, I will not argue and try and say he's not telling the truth and so forth. That is for historians uh, to tell the story because the story will come out one day. But what I'm uh, interested in is that uh, he's not the first leader uh, the first top hierarchy is NPF to say that. You know the story of Robert Mugabe, that Ubabaga Kamkabe, you know, Ubabaga Robert Mugabe left Kutama and came and circled Kobulawa, trying to teach a carpentry somewhere, uh, St. Columbus, Lafana, or somewhere there. But what happened was uh, he married a woman from Cholocho, he had kids, and uh, later on, life from the 90s and so forth, we knew uh, that uh, Umkabe had siblings in, in, in Bulawayo, uh, and some of them are still alive. So Mugabe had a connection uh, with Matebeleland because he had a family in Matebeleland. Then, of course, now there's the story of OED. He talks about he talks about Ukuluake. He brings a connection to Matebeleland. And of course, we, we had them Feniga. Chief Ma, uh, Chief Ma, uh, Ma Bikwa. Chief Ma Bikwa, yes. Uh, uh, Wenga said Ukokwake was in the royal cycle, Gamziliga uh, or Lopengula, and he said, Yena, he's a Mzugulu, Kokumalu. And my question is if three of these uh, top leaders, Zanu, have connections with Matebelele and they have relatives and have this connection, why did Gukuraundi happen? Did Gukuraundi happen because of these links, where some of these comrades are revenging for what would have, they assumed had happened in the past. That is one question that I want us to discuss. We don't have the answer, but I hope that in our lifetime, we are going to have an answer to what happened. I hope we will get these answers in our lifetime. Yes, with that complex issue, Amandevele at Sindaba Pendule, I would like to say probably we need to stop here for now so that uh, we get time to digest some of these issues that we talked about and we question ourselves, we argue amongst ourselves, and we find answers. For those who be driving to the rural areas to holiday destinations, please drive safely because there was Uti, yes, can say holiday, which I'll go my accidents, but uh, from me, Zenzel and Devele. Happy Easter holidays. And I am Alice, the AI presenter. Enjoy your long weekend and see you next week.